प्रति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह नजर समीपे रहो हमारी एह कनिष्ठा महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ओमाइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puji Guruji, Puji Santo and all you Bhaktos, Jai Swami Narayan. Today's lecture is on Yuva Course 6 in English, and there's three particular parts that we'll be covering today, specifically the Vachnamur Vartal 11th, Aswamini Vato regarding happiness and Bhaktaraj Shri Dada Kachar. So, without further ado, let's begin with the Vachnamut Vartal 11th, the destruction of the Jeev. Love for the Satpurush is the only means to realizing the Atma. This is the title Nansanto have given this Vachnamut. Swami Narayan Hare, Anposh Sudhi Punam. Some month 1882, January 23rd, 1826, that is the American date. Swami Sri Sajanji Maharaj was sitting on a cushion with a cylindrical pillow that had been placed on a wooden cot under the neem tree in the campus of the Mandir of Sri Lakshmi Dev in Vartal. He was dressed entirely in white clothes. He had also he was also wearing garlands of white flowers around his neck. In addition to this, bunches of flowers were placed above his ears and tassels of flowers were also hanging from his bag. At that time, an assembly of all of the Munis as well as devotees from various places had gathered before him. It's just as an introduction now where Bhagwan Swami Aran is seated and who is in front of him. Now moving on to the gist of the Vachnamurut. Thereupon Sri said, My nature is such that I feel extremely afraid of harming any of the following. Firstly, God. Secondly, a devotee of God. Thirdly, a Brahman. And fourthly, one who is meek. Other than these four, I am afraid of no one. This is because even if one were to harm anyone else, one's body would be destroyed. The jeev would not be destroyed. However, if a person harms one of these four, then his jeev will also be destroyed. In this Vachnurut, Bhagwan Swami Narayan is guiding us in such a way that these four that Bhagwan named, number one, God, number two, a devotee of God, number three, a Brahman, and number four, a meek person, or you can say a weak person, not physically, but by his nature, his swabhav. Now, in this world, there is much harm that is being done. And a person can be harmed in two ways. One is through men mental perspective by saying something in insulting words and the second is physical torment there is not a third way a person can be harmed a human being but Bhagwan Swami Narayan and looking into this as a religious matter there is no kind of physical uh, uh, you can say torture involved or torment involved here but all mental now Harming, meaning Bhagwan Swami Narayan is saying harming through one's suppressive swabhav or nature. Harming meaning insulting one. Harming meaning taking the avagun or negative quality of any of these four. That is what Bhagwan Swami Narayan is saying by harming. 
Now Bhagwan mentions God himself. God himself, nonetheless, second, the devotee of God. Third, a Brahman. A Brahman in the Hindu caste system is the highest of the four. The caste system has four segments. If we look at it in a pyramid stance, the pinnacle is the Brahman, which is the highest of the caste. Uh, he is the most noble. Uh, you can see he's the most educated. Uh, and uh, all the others actually somehow, some way, should uh, help and relate and respect such a Brahman. The second category is a Kshatriya, which is soldier, warriors. Third <coughs> is a Vaishya, meaning a businessman. And fourth is a Shudra, which is kind of like the untouchables or a lower caste. In Hinduism, in Indian society, even till this day right now, this caste system is followed and abide by. So Bhagwan mentions a Brahman. And finally, a person who is weak or meek. Meek meaning by his sobhav, by his nature, he has a very, very weak nature. Now, those who have a weak nature can be hurt easily. Um, if someone says some insulting words, if someone says some words that are inappropriate, that person will become damaged, distraught, distressed immediately. Now, Bhagwan is saying, I am not afraid of hurting anyone else except these four. Meaning, there's a certain weight that is put on in these four entities, obviously God and the devotee of God, meaning may it be a householder, may it be a saint, may it be a male, may it be a female, anyone, but it has to be a devotee of God. Bhagwan is afraid. Bhagwan is saying, I'm afraid of hurting. I'm afraid of harming such a person, a Brahman and a meek. Why? Because this is even if if one were to harm anyone else, one's body would be destroyed. Body meaning mm, one might physically get hurt, one might get some kind of uh, illness or something like that uh, due to that person's curse, let's put it that way. But the jeev will not be destroyed. Now in the Shikshapatri and also in the Vachnamrut, the jeev's nature is indestructible, is eternal, it cannot be pierced, it cannot be uh, damaged in any way. It's full of consciousness, light, gnan. These are the characteristics of the soul. Now, Bhagwan is saying destroyed for the soul. Now that word just doesn't fit for that particular category. But Bhagwan will explain. However, if a person harms one of these four, then his jeev will be destroyed. Now, how can something that is permanent, full of light, full of gnan, something that cannot be pierced, something that cannot be damaged, how can that entity be destroyed? Now, our Adi Guru, Sadguru Sri Muktanand Swami, so kind to ask. Swami says, hearing this, Muktanand Swami asked a question. Swami says, Maharaj, the jeev is said to be indestructible. What then should one understand by its destruction? Swami asks. Sri Maharaj replied, he would attain the body of a mountain, meaning the soul, the jeev, or any other similar object that has a jud form. Hence, that jeev never attains liberation. This should be understood as the destruction of the jeev. Thus, anyone who aspires for his own liberation should never harm any of these four. Bhagwan Swaminarayan is saying that what is considered to be destruction in his eyes, in his perspective, the jeev will attain a body of a mountain, a rock, a tree. One may believe, one may not believe, but in reality, Mount Everest is actually a soul. There's a soul inside of it. All the other mountains, trees, everything has soul inside of it, which we may not even know of. Let's put it that way. But 
saying so, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that that person would, that jeev would attain such a body that there is no way of attaining liberation. Meaning, a mountain cannot talk, a mountain cannot do sun samagam, a mountain cannot do bhakti of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, a mountain cannot meditate. All everything is locked for that person. A mountain cannot move. A tree cannot move, a tree cannot talk. So then how can that particular object attain liberation? This is what Bhagwan Swamiran is saying by the destruction of the soul. That's why one should be very afraid of trying to even harm any of these four and stay away from harming any of these four. Also, one should never keep egotism of any sort before God or his devotee. Guruji always has us recite the Gadi Hari ke das ahi das, tin ke das ahoi kara, chadka pat karna nash, vartana shud hoi kara. Dasana das thaine, vadi je rahe sat sangama, bhakti teni bali manisha, rachisha tena rangama. Such kind of Gadis as devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, as Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, we should have by heart. So whenever even the smallest minute type of thought occurs of I am something one can directly relate and sing this study in one's mind and think that I am a Das, I am Bhagwan's servant, I am Santo and Bhakto's servant. I do not want to be anything, I want to please Maharaj, Guruji, Santo and Bhakto. That's the kind of nature one should have. Why? Because egotism is the cause of anger Matsar, jealousy, and slander. In fact, even the bhakti of an egotist is such to be demonic. Moreover, if a person oppresses a devotee of God, then even if he himself is a devotee, he should also be known as a demon. These are Bhagwan Swaminarayan's words. My nature is such that I detest even the, sl the sight of one who harms a Brahman a meek person or a devotee of God. Such a person will never attain my company either in this realm or in other realms. So Bhagwan Swami Narayan relates the root cause to be ego. Egotism is the root cause of all other vices or natures or bad natures. If one dissolves this one element, then one would eternally become happy. But, is it that easy? Is it really that easy as just saying it, that this element can be dissolved? Is it really that easy by just saying that it can be done instantaneously? No. But, it's not impossible. Through the company of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ekantik Satpurush and his Santo and Bhakto and his Divine Satsang, Anything and everything is possible. It's just a matter of putting faith and trust inside of oneself and in this satsang and moving forward and striving for the best. Now Bhagwan says that egotism is the cause of anger, matsar, jealousy, and slander. Anger, obviously everyone knows. Matsar meaning envy. It's a type of envy, jealousy, and slander. In fact, even the bhakti of an egotist is said to be demonic. Bhagwan says even one who performs devotion but is egotistical, his bhakti is, is, is demonic. I do not like it. And Bhagwan does not get along with such a person. Having spoken in this manner, Sriji Maharaj asked for two devotional songs to be sung. One was Mara Harji Shuhit. The second was Maravala Ji Shuvalap. He then gave a command that all satsangis should learn these two devotional songs, meaning kirtans, and added, one should constantly sing these two devotional kirtans and remember th their message. Through the Agna of our Puja Guruji, every morning when we do Arati Stuti at 7.15, this after Arti, Dhuna's song, and then Visve Sacho, and then both of these buds are sung 
every single day we were following Maharaj's command of singing it every single day. Thereafter, Sri Maharaj got up and sat on a dais in front of the mandir of Sri Lakshmi Narayan Dev. Goparan Swami then asked, why is it that despite reading the Sastras, the Puranas, and other scriptures, the Pandits of the world still do not understand the greatness of God and the Sant as, as it really is? What is the reason for this? Sri Maharaj replied, though such a person reads the Sastras and Puranas, he does not have the refuge of God. Thus his Jew has been overpowered by lust, anger, avarice, jealousy, and matsar, and the inner enemies in the form of lust, anger, never allow him to even raise his head. As a result, the Pandits perceive God and his Santo to be like themselves. This is the worst thing to do, is compare oneself at the same level, as the same pedestal, as God and His Son. When one does this, then one should understand that one will never attain Bhagwan Swaminarayan or his Ekantik Satpurusha's Rajipo. If one wants to attain the Rajipo of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his Ekantik Satpurush, one main thing to do is become humble and believe, according to the Vachnamrut Gadara, 1st chapter 58. At the end, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says, how can a person become a firm devotee? And Bhagwan Swaminarayan gives the answer that by believing that everyone else is superior to me and I am inferior compared to everyone else, a high-low ratio. In the same way over here, a person believing oneself to be on the same level will never attain Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Rajipo or his Akshradam. They think, meaning these pandits, these, these scholars, they think just as the inner enemies of lust, anger within us are never eradicated, similarly, the same enemies are probably not eradicated from them either. In this manner, they perceive faults in God and His Son. So even though they read the Sastras and Purans, they fail to realize the greatness of God and His Son as it really is. So, due to them taking the faults of God and His Santo, uh, there's no way uh, for them to uh, realize the greatness. Moving on. Next, Sri Maharaj posed a question to Dinad Bhatt and all of the Munis. The Satpurush, who is Brahm Swarup, behaves above the three bodies and the three states. Moreover, he does not believe any of the actions of the 14 Indriyas to be to affect him. However, an ignorant person cannot realize this. Let's stop right there and let's analyze. Sri Maharaj poses a question to Dinanath, but the Satpurush was Brahm Swarup. What does that mean? Brahm Swarup. Brahm Swarup, in short, is one who is God realized and has a constant connection with Bhagwan Swami Narayan and does not believe himself to be the body, but believes him to be believes himself to be brahm meaning or akshar rup or meaning bhagwan's divine abode and he beholds bhagwan swami narayan's murti inside of himself this is the form of brahm swarup he behaves above the three bodies which is stud shukshma and karan gross subtle and casual and the three states wake dream and deep sleep. Moreover, he does not believe any of the actions of the 14 Indriyas to affect him. 14 Indriyas meaning, if we break it down, 5 Gnan Indriyas, 5 Karma Indriyas, and the Antakaran, which is divided into 4, Man, Muti, Chit, and Ahankar. When we total all these, they equal 14. The Satpurush does not believe any of these Indriyas to be a part of him. Even if the soul is inside, none of this is part of him, believes and understands completely is detached from the body. However, an ignorant person cannot realize this. Only when he attains a spiritual state similar to that of the great, Sat, great Purush, does he behave like the great Purush 
and only then does he understand the great Purusha's behavior. However, as long as one has not realized the greatness of the Sat Purush, one does not attain the state of being Brahmswarup. Yet, without realize, Atma realization, one cannot realize the greatness of the Sat Purush. Hence, there seems to be a paradox. Now, please explain how this paradox can be re reconciled. Meaning, now there's a, it's kind of hitting each other, you know. A paradox is something which is kind of uh, crossing each other's points. So, a person who realizes oneself to be Brahm Swarup understands how the Satpurush is behaving. And on the other side, if one realizes Satpurush, if one does not realize, then one cannot understand the state of the Satpurush. So, what's going on? How can this be resolved? Everyone attempted to answer to the best of their ability, but one was, but no one was able to give a solution to the question. Now the answer that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is going to give, according to my opinion, is probably one of the most important statements of the Vachnamrut. By taking this answer and implementing it into one's life, Ultimate liberation is guaranteed. That's how much weight this very statement that Bhagwan Swaminarayan will give has. So, without further ado, then Sri Jimarat said, Here, allow me to answer. The answer is that when one develops intense affection for the Sant, who has realized the avatar of God, on this earth, then one never perceives any kind of fault in the Sadpurush. For example, when one has strong, strong affection for someone, one would never see the person's flaws and one will always believe the person's words. So if we look at it in the worldly terms, we have our parents, our siblings, our family, our relatives. All these people who have, we have very close connection with, maybe our friends, our long-term friends, there is no way that we have any kind of faults for them. Even if they become angry at us, even if they have us drop something that we want to do, even if they are very, very mean and rude to us and say very, very harsh words, there is no way that we ever develop faults for them, which is a long-term or a permanency. We always forget and forgive and move on. Because that's the kind of affection that we have. May it be a husband and wife as well. A husband and wife bicker, fight all the time. It's just human nature. But at the end, at the end of the day, they always get back together. In the same way, when one does not develop any kind of fault in the Ekantik Sat Purush, this will happen. What? Now let's take a look. He would be able to understand the Sat Purush's words, believe in the words of the Sat Purush. This is natural on the worldly path and it is also natural on the path of liberation. Now here's the most important sentence. Therefore, intense love for the Satpurush is the only means to realizing one's Atma. It is also the only means to realizing the greatness of the Satpurush. And it is also the only means to realizing the direct or having the direct realization of God. It's a three in one. Bhagwan Swami Narayan gave us three you can say three uh, elements that will completely make us different, transform our life with one key. One key, which is intense affection. Just like according to the Vachram Gadada, first chapter 54, Bhagwan Swami Narayan says, the question is asked by Sadhguru Sri Muktanand Swami that how can the gateway of liberation be opened? 
And Bhagwan, uh, Bhagwan Swaminarayan answers, by having intense affection for the Ekantik Sadhgurus, just like how we have affection for one's relatives. If we develop the same level of affection for the Ekantik Satpurush, then one's gateway to liberation will be opened. In the same way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan shows the same key, but three doors open. The first door, one realizes one's Atma. The second door, one realizes the greatness of the Ekantik Satpurush. And the third door, one has direct realization of God. Now, what else is left to do besides this in the spiritual world? Everything is comprised in these three. And the very key means is affection, intense affection for the Satpurush. Now, what is intense affection? There's many kinds of affections. There's many levels of affection. 5%, 10%, 50%, 75%, 100%. 100%. 100%. But what is that 100%? How can an example be given that can put that 100% into perspective in one's mind? Well, suppose we have two glasses, and in one glass, the same level of water is poured in the other glass, milk is poured. In the water glass, one spoon of salt is added and stirred. In the glass of milk, one spoon of sugar is added and stirred. Then we transfer it into, you can say, a vessel and start to warm up both of them. You warm it up so much that the water burns and you see white particles. What is that whiteness? Salt. If you ever try it, you'll know. Salt will remain. It will not completely dissolve. But milk, you burn it and burn and burn it. It will become a pando or barfi, but it will not. You'll not be able to see the sugar. In the same way, intense affection is like the milk and sugar completely melting into and becoming one. There is no kind of separation. No matter what happens, no matter what kind of natures we have, no matter what the world says, no matter what, there is no breaking. That kind of intense affection for the Satpurush, when that kind of affection occurs, then these three doors open. Simple. Simple yet difficult because right now we have affection for our mom, dad, grandfather, grandmother, siblings, uncle, aunt, so on and so forth, our friends. What we need to do is extract that affection, that same level, and insert it into the Ekantik Satpurush who is waiting. He wants us to do this so he can attach our soul to God. The very purpose the Ekantik Satpurush comes on this earth is for taking each soul and giving it to God. That's the only reason why he comes on this earth. Mm. There's no other reason. But if one can understand and if one, under, and if one develops affection for the Satpurush, then it's possible. Or else it's not possible. So this ends the uh, Vachnamud Vartha 11th. Let's move on to Swami Nivato. <clears throat> Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare, Sadguru Shri Gunatitanan Swami Nivato. Bliss lies in four things. First, remembering the Murti of God. Second, company of the sadhus. Third, noble thoughts. Bliss is only in these three things. And the fourth is understanding the worldly objects which the jeev believes to be per, uh, pleasurable are a source of misery. The great sadhus have not stated in any scriptures that any bliss being of the worldly objects. May they be cars, may they be fancy homes and fancy clothes and the opposite gender or electronic devices or anything. Satpurush has never said that affection or you can say 
bliss only is in worldly objects. And to act as the Atma is totally different experience. There is no fault in such. Just as if one were to dig into the soils of Gujarat, it would be possible to find stones. Similarly, there is no fault in this experience. This is Prakaran 3, Vat number 6. There is bliss in four things, but in reality, in three. Number one is Bhagwan's Murti, number two is the association of the Sant, and number three is noble thoughts. By having noble thoughts, thoughts of Bhagwan, thoughts of the Ekantik Satpurush, thoughts of this Satsang to be very gl glorious and grand, one stays at bliss. And the other two, God and his son are also full of bliss. But remember, worldly pleasures are never of bliss. So do not ever attach oneself to worldly pleasures. Thus ends the Swami Nivato. And finally, the Charitra for today. <clears throat> Bhagwan Swami Narayan brought down with him 500 nun santo. And out of those 500 nun santo, we are very fortunate that the head and top most top sant is Sadhguru Sri Muktanand Swami, who is in our Guru Parampara and as our Adi Guru. In the same way, Bhagwan Swaminarayan also brought down many, many devotees who were Anadi Muktos, and out of all the top Anadi Muktos, out of the Hari Bhaktos that came on this earth, Bhaktaraj Dada Khachar is the most top. On one side, Sadhguru Sri Muktanand Swami, whose Katha is being done currently right now and can be seen at Loyadam uh, Mandir uh, YouTube channel, and Bhaktaraj Dada Khachar, whose Katha is also being done and also can be seen on our Loyadam Mandir YouTube channel. These two, you can say one sant and one bhakt, played such a vital role in the Swaminarayan Sampraday that we can extract and take so much from their life. But we would like to just take a little bit of Dada Khachar's life and see how he was. Once Maharaj got sad for some reason, and walked away from Gadpur. Maharaj used to always become a little bit, you can say, <clears throat> uh, used to become sad and for no reason and do these kinds of Leela Charitras. So one day he became sad and started to walk out of Gadpur. Dada Kachar ran after him, after Maharaj and hugged Maharaj. Maharaj released himself from the embrace of, uh, of Dada Kachar and walked again. Again, Dada Khachar would go after Maharaj, hug him, and Maharaj would break him away. Dada Khachar did this five times, and on the sixth time, when Dada Khachar came and hugged Maharaj, Maharaj shoved him so hard that Dada Khachar fell to the ground and started to cry. Maharaj walked a little and looked back, and when he looked back, he saw Dada Khachar crying and Maharaj felt very, very sad that he went back, got Dada Khachar up, hugged Dada Khachar and said, ask for anything. And Dada Khachar asked that, hey Maharaj, please stay here forever with me. And in that way, Bhagwan Swaminathan himself stayed on this earth only for 49 years. But out of the 49 years, 29 years he stayed in Gadda, in Dada Khachar's Darbar. How fortunate, how lucky, how much of a great entity and element is Dada Khachar that Bhagwan Swaminarayan, the Supreme Lord of Lords, who only comes on this earth or only comes in this universe once, came and stayed in Dada Khachar's Darbar for 29 years. How fortunate, how much Rajipo must have Dada Khachar attained of Bhagwan Swami Narayan that this prasang, this whole event happened. Nonetheless, 
<clears throat> Once, an old woman stole 300 rupees from Dada Khachar and ran away from Gadrada. As soon as she reached the border of Gadrada, she changed her mind and thought, I shouldn't have done this. Let me go return the money. So deciding, she arrived in the court of Dada Khachar and sat down and just started to chant Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, like nothing has happened. She put the money back where it was and started to chant Bhagwan's name. Maharaj said to Dada Khachar, that old woman has stole the money and has returned it. Take the money and chop her head off. Then Dada Khachar said, hey Maharaj, she only stole my money, but she had, but if she had killed my son Bhavo, still, how can I kill her? Because of her tongue, she is saying your name, Swami Narayan. How can I kill? Even if he, even if she kills my son, I cannot kill her because she is chanting your name. Your greatness is so much that this money, this son, this property, nothing is worth your name, your greatness. So listening to this, Maharaj became very pleased. And finally, this, uh, the last Charitra, one Sri Maharaj asked Dada Khachar <clears throat> to completely give up his property to his two sisters. At that time, without even a single thought, Dada Khachar immediately gave away all his property to or and signed a will to his two sisters. Then Maharaj asked Dada Khachar, what shall you do now? Dada Khachar replied, I will go to Bhavnagar, get a job there and make a living. Maharaj became so happy that in that time, there is no darbar or you can say no, no such kind of people would even give any kind of property to the opposite gender. But by Bhagwan Swaminarayan saying, by Bhagwan Swaminarayan saying, such was done. And that's how the Adhakachar attained Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Rajipo so much so that Bhagwan Swaminarayan lived in the village of Gadada for 29 years and, and, and gave the Adhakachar and his whole family bliss this is the story in charitra of dada kachar and if one wants to listen it in more and extent our loyadam mandir youtube channel has this charitra so this was our loyadam ua course number six in english for those who do not have the course uh you can uh, also send us an email loyadam ng at the rate gmail.com so without further further ado this was uh, our ua course six the next course will be held uh, in the near future. Uh, next week, the week after is Divari Utsav here at Loyada Mandir. So the week probably after that. Saying that, my humble, Jai Swaminarayan.